My name is Lynn Hodgson, and I'm a uh, historian, primarily uh, World War II intelligence, special operations and whatnot. And I also have uh, researched uh, in depth uh, into uh, Sir William Stevenson and his entire operations in the Americas. His, his relationship with uh, the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, and uh, setting up of Camp X, setting up the entire operation. So I, uh, I write extensively on that. So what you have to do is you have to go back to uh, the 1930s. And in the 1930s, uh, Stevenson, after graduating from university, of course, Stevenson was a Canadian born in um, Winnipeg, Manitoba, very bright man. And after university, he uh, went out into the world of uh, inventing. He invented many, many things, most of them related to electronics, radios and that type of thing. He even actually enhanced the fax machine, what we know as the fax machine back then for commercial use, away from military use to commercial use. In doing so, all during the 30s, he traveled extensively throughout Europe and uh, selling his, uh, his inventions. And he became a very rich man. And he was living in London, England at the time. And uh, before Winston Churchill became prime minister, uh, he had befriended uh, William Stevenson. And any time that Stevenson came back to London after his, his travels, they'd get together for an evening and talk about the world, things that were going on in the world. And Stevenson um, advised uh, Churchill that... Uh, uh, Germany was building up their armaments again uh, in violation of the uh, Treaty of Versailles. Churchill at the same time was saying, well, I, I know what's happening as well, and I'm very concerned about it. Uh, it's obvious what uh, Herr Hitler is, is, is up to. Uh, Churchill himself, during the 1940, uh, summer of 1940, during the Battle of Britain, with uh, planes fighting above him, and he... Steve, uh, Churchill with his bunker 45 feet under under Whitehall created in, in desperation something called the SOE, the Special Operations Executive. And that's a branch of the SIS, the Secret Intelligence Service. And uh, that that uh, the creation of that organization changed the, 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 the entire scope of what would happen during World War II. It took regular fighting to another level. And that level was called ungentlemanly warfare and uh, anything goes kids gloves off queensberry rules of fighting out the door uh, including even assassination so it was a real desperate move that uh, churchill had had made and in creating it he put two men in charge one was sir colin gubbins uh, uh, in charge of britain and all of um, europe and he put a canadian named william stevenson in charge of the americas Stevenson, with that uh, charge, was very anxious to come to back to North America and set up his organization, and he moved quickly. He came to New York first and uh, set up his, uh, his organization. Uh, he had many difficulties that he ran into as well at the same time. He had to find office space, so he rented the 35th and 36th floor of the uh, Roosevelt uh, Manhattan site and uh, had to find manpower then. That was a problem for him. Uh, he couldn't hire Americans because America was neutral at the time. They weren't in the World War, War II. So uh, he had to go out and find uh, manpower. And how he did that was he placed an ad, small ad in the paper of a Toronto newspaper saying, wanted for the war effort, women uh, apply and a telephone number to call. And so when he called, you, someone would call, they would ask for Bill Simpson. Well, Bill, Bill Simpson was a nom de, nom de guerre for an individual who was in charge of all this. From that single ad, 1,500 Torontonian and Canadian young women between the ages of 18 and 22 applied for that position and ended up working for Stevenson in his operations in New York. Churchill, one of the things that he told Stevenson when he left to come to North America said to him, one of the most important things you, you need to do is to get Roosevelt into the Second World War. That's the most important thing. And then he thought, well, how do I go about that? Well, I've got to get two key players on side. One of them 
Bill Donovan of the OSS, the forerunner of the modern day CIA, uh, and the other one, J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI. He asked for meetings with them immediately. And in setting up those meetings, he leveled with the two of them and said, this is what I'm going to be doing. And I want your blessings on doing that. And uh, he, so he got their blessings. And as a matter of fact, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, he suggested to Hoover, Hoover was a, a big, big police guy, as you know. So he uh, said to Hoover, I'm setting up a base in Canada. It's a special school. And uh, I'd like you to come up and I'd like you to bring some of your top FBI agents up and take the, the training there, experience the training, to see what we're doing. And so he took him up on that. And when Camp X opened in uh, Whitby, Oshawa, Ontario, he um, actually got him in, in to experience the training. And uh, he was so impressed with it, he said to, uh, to Stevenson, you have a free hand to operate in the United States. Uh, the only thing I ask is that anything you find from a domestic standpoint that I should know about, let me know right away and we'll get along great. And that they actually did get along great all during the war. Uh, from there, Stevenson's operations uh, were broadened to, as I said, Camp X. Uh, his uh, entire operations, once by 1943, he had over 2,000 people in his operations. And it included all of the Americas. He started to recruit agents for the European theater of war. And that was done locally. He uh, recruited ham operators, radio operators, and they were to operate both the hydro operations, which was the radio communications between Camp X and Bletchley Park in England. But he also hired them to be trained as agents to go down to South America and spy on German activities. So they sent a number of, of, of uh, fellows down to, to South America to, to do exactly that. And um, it was very, very effective. Uh, they were very um, successful in what they were able to do, spying on the, the, the Germans. They were able to, uh, over a period of time, take out almost the entire U-boat fleet that the German, Germans had in the Kriegsmarine. Um, they were very successful in Europe with the agents they sent over there. And just summing this part of it up, the, the importance of it, the agents that he sent over to uh, France, for example, before D-Day, there were approximately 45 French Canadian agents trained at Camp X in preparation for D-Day. And uh, they were so successful in what they did that uh, Sir Colin Govins wrote to Winston Churchill after the war and he said, of the 950 special missions that were called for by the BBC on the night of June the 5th, they were successful in over 900 of those missions. And those missions were to derail the Germans so they couldn't come back from Calais where they thought the invasion was going to take place back to Normandy. They clogged up the, uh, the rail lines. They clogged up the highways. They, they, they took out the communications. And it was tremendously successful. And because of that, they saved thousands of lives uh, during the, uh, the uh, Normandy uh, invasion and subsequently after. And again, he summed it up by saying that with, with the success of the special operations of the SOE, they saved over a, a million lives and reduced the duration of the war up by up to a year and a half. The legacy that, that Stevenson created was that he took what we had before World War II, which was a very small uh, intelligence department and it was actually a department, a security department of the RCMP. And he took that and just overnight, literally within, within two years, developed that into one of the, uh, one of the most uh, influential and uh, successful intelligence organizations in the world. And that being both American side and Canadian side. Uh, of course, the, the, uh, on the American side, uh, what he established through Camp X and through the, the staff that he had there was basically the CIA. The, 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 the Americans had a very small intelligence organization called the COI, the Co Coordinator of Information, before the war. 
And uh, that too, because of Stevenson, bloomed into this huge organization that we know of today called the CIA. Uh, on the Canadian side, um, it branched out from, from Camp X and all of our intelligence organizations today recognize, and that's why they're behind this project so much, um, recognize that they were born out of, out of that operation, Stevenson's operations and Camp X. And it's established a number of uh, significant intelligence organizations to today. The, uh, the uh, uh, CSE, which is the Communications Security Establishment, CSIS, JTF2, which is our Camp X agents of today, uh, JTFX, uh, which is another branch, it's called Human Intelligence. And uh, all of those organizations are active today throughout the world. And uh, so that, that, that was what he created, that's his legacy. And um, I, I often say when I'm talking to groups that, uh, you know, what we need today is we need another Bill Stevenson, we need another uh, Donovan um, to get us back to where we, we should be. The unveiling uh, is, is going to take place on uh, May the 8th, which is uh, VE Day. A victory in, in Europe. And uh, it's very significant because uh, uh, Canada played such a huge role in uh, the, the successes that, that came about with VE Day. And so it's a great opportunity to uh, showcase this unveiling on that particular day. So it's very significant because we did play such a huge role. And Stevenson played such a huge role in uh, in the successful outcome of World War II, which teetered on going either way at, at several points during the war. And my role in the uh, creation of the, the statue was that uh, uh, Sue Green approached me, I'm thinking a year and a half ago, something like that, and uh, uh, wanting to know if I would be a part of this project. And then she explained the project to me, the uh, sculpture of uh, Sir William Stevenson, and uh, the huge X, which is obviously very significant to the sculpture as well, and asked me to be a part of that. And I said, absolutely. So we got together as a team, uh, Ruth, Sue, her husband, myself, and um, started to lay out the plans for the uh, unveiling of the of the sculpture, the sculpture, and uh, the other significant role that that uh, I was asked to play in it was the creation of the X itself in terms of uh, the wording that was going to go on the on the uh, sculpture and the X. Uh, the X itself, being very large in size, uh, has thirty five hundred words on it, telling the story of Sir William Stevenson. And just as I've I've told you in this this interview, so very uh, significant uh, all of his uh, successes, and uh, and basically again as you said earlier, his his legacy is told on that very large X, and uh, and all our supporters are looking forward to to the unveiling. It's going to be I, I'm sure once they get into into position in the square, it's going to be. Uh, mind-blowing in terms of uh, how it's going to stand out in that in that square. So we're all looking uh, very anxiously uh, towards that day. Back in the 1970s, I uh, was bold enough to call Stevenson in uh, Bermuda. And back in those days, you uh, would make your phone calls, your long distance phone calls on Sunday because it was half price on Sunday. And uh, so I would always call on, on Sunday afternoon. And the first time I called, um, Sir William Stevenson had a, uh, a maid or someone that looked after him because he was very elderly and, and not that well. And uh, she would answer the phone and, and he, he would say, who's calling? And she would say, and she would ask me where I was. And I said, Canada, calling from Canada. So, uh, so that was the trigger at that point because uh, she would say to him, well, it's Canada calling. Well, Canada calling could have been anyone. He was, very, he was still very much involved in intelligence, even 
at that time in the 1970s. And so every time I would call, I would say Canada calling. And that would automatically get my call through to Sir William. And uh, he was very supportive. He, we were doing a number of things back then. We were trying to get a museum put together for, uh, for, for Camp X. And he was always very supportive in saying that um, I, I don't want to be involved in any way other than I want the significance to be on the men and women of Camp X. So as long as they're forefront, I'll support whatever projects your team is working on. And so he was very supportive from that standpoint. As a matter of fact, he sent us a very large portrait that he had made of he and his wife, Mary, uh, specifically for our event that, that we were we were having a special special dinner and dedication where we were presenting him with the key to the city. And at that time, it was uh, it was put on by the Oshawa Armories. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he was very, very uh, supportive and very involved in our early attempts to uh, to get something in recognition. And over the time, things have happened, not as much as I would like to have had happen, but we were able to get uh, historical uh, significance for Camp X itself and get it registered. We were able to put a, together a number of uh, uh, museums and exhibits, and they, they're still around today. In fact, I'm working on one project right now at Casa Loma uh, to feature Stevenson and his uh, organization. So, yes, very, very... Uh, he was very much involved. I'd just like to say that uh, I, I'm very happy that, that Sue approached me uh, when she did to be involved in this project. It's been, it's been a great project to work on. And quite frankly, the number of projects that I've attempted to have over the years have, have not come to fruition. And uh, this project came to fruition very quickly, and I was very impressed. Uh, how quickly it came together, and and uh, the result is in the uh, in the statue that we uh, that we're going to be uh, unveiling on the on VE Day. <laughs>